Hallelujah. Glory be to the living God. This has been heavy on my heart for, for maybe two weeks now. And I believe the Lord wants me to share this. You know, the Lord set me free from a religious mindset. The Lord delivered me from a Pharisee spirit. The Lord brought me into a revelation of his grace and in his mercy. And the way that he did this is I got in a place where and I remember the times where I needed the mercy of the Lord. I needed him to have mercy on me. I've been in a lot of situations where I've, I've had to cry out to the Lord and beg him for his mercy and beg him for his grace. And he gave it to me. And you know, I even remember the time when I was in the streets and everything and I was in jail facing five to ten years. And I remember I cried out to the Lord begging for his mercy, begging for him to give me another chance. I didn't want to be sent down the road for all those years. And he had mercy on me. I remember the times that I've been in shootouts and I almost lost my life. He had mercy on me. And you know, when I got saved and everything along the way, I had met different people, met different brothers, ended up fellowshipping with them. And a lot of them I can say was cults. They had a religious mindset and I had that religious mindset, like that Pharisee mindset. And if you study the ministry of Jesus, he was hard on the Pharisees. He was hard on these religious leaders who thought that they were so righteous in the sight of God, but they despised everybody else. He called them hypocrites. He rebuked them, said woe unto them. He was harder on them. You know, Jesus defended sinners. A Pharisee invited Jesus to his home to come and dine with him. And a woman with an alabaster box came in there and started pouring this expensive oil on Jesus' feet and started wiping his feet with her hair and washing his feet with her tears. You know, this Pharisee said within himself, if, if Jesus, if he's the Messiah to come, if he's a prophet, if he's real and he's holy, then he would know what type of woman this is that's touching him. Maybe she was a prostitute. Maybe she was a harlot. But Jesus defended this woman and said, you know, you invited me in your home and you didn't offer me anything to drink. You didn't offer to wash my feet, but this woman been kissing my feet and washing my feet with her tears and wiping them with her hair. He defended this woman and then looked at her and said, your sins, which are many, are forgiven. He, he rebuked this Pharisee, this religious leader, and took up for the sinner, this woman. In John 8, you see it again, this woman caught in the act of adultery. The Pharisees went and grabbed this woman, snatched her up, threw her to the ground and said, Jesus, Moses and the law told us to stone such a woman for committing adultery. But Jesus bent down and started writing in the sand, writing in the dirt. And they said, what do you say? They was ready with stones in their hand to kill her. But Jesus said, he that is without sin among you, you cast the first stone at her. He defended this woman. And they looked at her and said, where's your accusers, woman? She said, there's none left. Jesus said, I don't condemn you either. Now go and sin no more. He didn't justify her sin. But he defended her because that's what he came to do. He came to save those who are lost. He came to seek and save the sinners. And people today who even call themselves Christians today. A lot of them have a religious mindset where they just want judgment to fall on people. They don't want to see Jesus really save them and change their lives. They just want to show how righteous they are. They just want to show how justified they are in the sight of God. And you got some of them who even go out there and do works for the Lord and think that uh, that justifies them. And they, they despise sinners. I've been with some of them. I've been out there in the streets preaching with some. Where they despise sinners and look at them and like, they're better than them and want judgment to fall on them. And you know, James and John did the same thing in the Bible. 
The Bible says that James and John and Jesus came to the city of the Samaritan village. Hallelujah. And they didn't accept Jesus. And James and John looked at Jesus and said, you want us to call fire down from heaven to consume them like Elijah did, to kill them? Jesus looked at them and rebuked them and said, you don't know what spirit you are of. I didn't come to destroy men's lives. I came to save them. He rebuked them and said, y'all are the wrong spirit. And see, the problem was they had this religious mindset. They had a misguided zeal. And they thought just because they was followers of Jesus and doing these works for Jesus, they thought they was justified in his sight. And they despised sinners. They didn't really have a revelation of grace and mercy. They didn't really have a revelation of what Jesus came to do. And I was like that. And you got a lot of them that still like that. And I've had brothers turn their back on me because they still like that. But I've come into this new revelation of the grace and mercy. To understand that Jesus came to save people. He came to break chains. He came to set captives free. He came full of grace and mercy and truth. He didn't come to destroy people's lives. He, he don't, it's not God's will that anyone should perish, but that all come to repentance. And if you have that mindset where you just want God to send judgment on people, you can't win souls. God can't use you the way that he desired to. He can't win people over through you. There's no mercy and grace with that religious Pharisee mindset. Or if you got a Pharisee spirit, Jesus rebuked them and he was hard on them. They had a misguided zeal thinking they doing God great service. But Jesus kept on rebuking them. He even said, you go die in your sins. You don't believe that I'm who I say I am. Y'all just ready to execute justice. But Jesus said, I came to save them. I came to save them from hell and damnation. And I'm reading this right here in the book of Luke chapter 18. Where Jesus spake a parable and said, and this parable was to reveal <laughs> about this Pharisee and this sinner that went up in the temple to pray. It says in verse 9, he spake the par this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Like people today think they so right with God because they're doing these works, because they know some scriptures. But the Bible says, but they despise others. They think that they're so righteous in the sight of God. They despise the people that still bound. And they forgot how they was bound by that alcohol, by that liquor. But they telling other people, you're going to hell for that. But you ain't telling them what Jesus came to do for them. Like you forgot the time that you cried out for mercy. The time that you needed his grace. The time that you needed his love. And now you think you're so justified in the sight of God. Yeah, the Lord exposing his spirit today. And I thank the Lord for setting me free from this because I had that same mindset and I didn't really have a revelation of his grace and mercy until I fell in the times that I really needed it. And now he's showing me to show it to other people. He said two men went in the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee and one was a public and a tax collector. And this Pharisee in the temple praying within himself saying, God, I thank you that I'm not like other men are extortioners, unjust, adulterers. Or even like this public and this sinner over here. The Pharisee said, I fast twice a week and I pay my tithes. And Jesus said, this sinner over here would not lift up so much as his eyes to heaven. But he beating on his chest saying, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Jesus said in verse 14, I tell you, this man, this sinner went down to his house justified rather than the other one. Then he said, everyone that exalt himself shall be abased, but the one that humble himself shall be exalted. Jesus said, this sinner was more justified in the sight of God than this Pharisee was. Thinking he's so righteous, praying to God, I'm glad I ain't like other people. I'm glad I ain't, I ain't out here smoking and cussing like they doing. I'm glad I ain't out here going to the clubs so I ain't in adultery like they is. I'm fasting and I pay my tithes, God. I'm glad I ain't like them. But Jesus said this sinner that came to a place of repentance in their heart and recognized what Jesus came to do for them wouldn't even look up their eyes to heaven because they know God so holy. But they beating on their chest saying, God, have mercy on me. I am a sinner, Lord. That's humbleness. That's the one that God comes and saves and sets free. The one that have a repentant heart. The one that recognizes how much grace and mercy they need. The one that don't despise other people. 
like this Pharisee do, like Pharisees do today. These are the ones that Jesus says is justified in the sight of God. They are the ones that declare righteous in the sight of God. Not you Pharisees out there that think that you got it all together and you don't. But, but you hide in your sins. But you try to tell everybody else they going to hell because it make you feel better about yourself, the stuff that you do in secret. <laughs> Jesus said you don't forgot. You don't forgot the debt that he don't forgave you for. You forgot. Jesus told us, what is it? About this, this king that had a servant that owed him 10,000 talents. A debt that he couldn't pay. I looked that up. You know 10,000 tal talents? It's like, what, 720, 750,000 pounds? 375 tons of gold? A debt that he couldn't pay, that's $14.5 billion. This servant owed a debt that he couldn't pay. It was impossible for him to pay, so he begged the king for mercy, Jesus said. Saying, have mercy on me, because this king had declared that his wife and children be sold, and he be thrown in a prison till he pay all the debt. And this servant fell down, begging for mercy and grace. Have mercy on me, give me time, be patient with me, I'll pay it. And the king was moved with compassion and forgave him of all his debt. But then when he released him, that same servant went out and found one of his servants that owed him. Not nearly as much as he was in debt for. But choked him, grabbed him by his neck and said, pay me what you owe me. And that servant asked him for mercy, but he wasn't willing to give it. He wasn't willing to give him mercy like he received. And Jesus said that the king heard about this and called that servant back and commanded him to be thrown to the tormentors. How many people like that today that call themselves Christians? They call themselves preachers. They forgot the great debt that they was owed. That they owed the Lord. They forgot the great debt that they was forgiven. But yet they despise others and refuse to have mercy. Jesus mean what he's saying in this word. We got to produce good fruit. All your works and stuff ain't going to justify you. We have to produce good fruit meat for repentance. And I thank the Lord for setting me free from that religious mindset that I had. From that Pharisee spirit that I had that only wanted judgment to fall. I had to learn that God is a God of justice, yes. I had to start looking at him as my father and not just my judge waiting to condemn me to hell. But he's standing there waiting to have mercy and grace. He said, come now and let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow though they be red like crimson they shall be as wool he said let us reason he's waiting and willing to forgive you of your sins he's not waiting and willing waiting to punish you to condemn you to hell it's not his will that anyone should perish but that all come to repentance people only condemn themselves when they refuse to come to this throne of grace but you got christians that make it hard they shut up the kingdom of heaven like jesus told the pharisees you shutting up the kingdom of heaven and you keeping people from coming in and you ain't even going in yourself. But you putting yokes on people next. When the Lord's saying, come. Even the prodigal son that came back to his father. His father was there waiting for him with open arms and he threw a party for him. He celebrated that his son came home. But look at the brother. The brother over there mad because he throwing a party and a cute, the fatted calf for him. The clothed him with a great robe honoring him and his jealousy feeling like he don't deserve to be forgiven for what he did how many christians like that today despising other people but that sinner that choosing to repent and humble themselves is the one that's more justified than you are and i praise the lord for this revelation revelation of grace and mercy and i hope we show grace and mercy to those in need because the lord loved the sinners but he hates sin and may we be that light that shines in this world for Jesus Christ. Let's not forget how much grace and mercy we needed. Y'all be blessed.